Okay, so by now you've probably heard about Apple's new MacBooks with the M1 processor deemed Apple Silicon. Today we're looking at the Pro model with what it includes and what's different. Let's get into it. Okay, so you've heard about the new MacBook, but what is Apple Silicon? It's a brand new processor built specifically for Apple's MacBooks by Apple. Previously, Apple was using Intel-based chips, which you'll recognize as i3, i5, or i7, and they worked well for the time being. But the thing is, it's just not like Apple to depend on other manufacturers or third-party components that they need to design around. They'd rather do everything in-house and have a whole ecosystem centering around both manufacturing and design simultaneously, hence the breakaway on their own. And the good thing about Apple Silicon really is that connection between design and manufacturing. They're able to create their own chip, which leads to more harmony between the system's hardware and software. And it's also possible that this affects things like lower cost, as well as significant performance improvements. And that's exactly what they've claimed to do. So at the November event, Apple announced three different models of M1, including the Air, Pro, and the Mini to debut as that new chip. And they were boasting benefits like better battery life, significantly faster apps, faster processor, which is gonna help with unzipping files and exporting files, a more responsive OS, and just a ton more features. And now this review comes in two different parts, but in one of those parts, we are gonna test all of those things in terms of performance. But first, we're gonna take a look at what's in the box. So taking a brief look inside, we can see it comes with the computer itself, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a quick start guide, and a wall charger to USB-C. So there's nothing really different or nothing out of the norm from what we would expect from getting a MacBook and what's included in the box. And I guess at this point, we should really just say thank you for them including a charger in the box. Now getting into the MacBook design itself. So in body and screen size, it's exactly the same as the 2019 model. In fact, in some cases, I was actually mistaking the two. But as you look a little bit closer at this form factor, you start to see some key differences. And all of them are for the better. For example, the base model now comes with a touch bar. Previously, you had physical keys in that top row unless you upgraded to the second model, which included that touch bar. Second, we have a standalone escape button now. So you're no longer gonna be fumbling to know where the escape button is without looking directly at that touch bar. Now you're gonna be able to feel it and you can press it way easier without looking and you won't accidentally press it because it was on a touch screen. And there's also separation if you look to the right on the touch bar between the touch ID power button and the actual touch bar itself. Again, boasting the same benefits of being able to navigate this without looking directly at it. Looking down at the keyboard, the arrow keys are now a little bit different as well. They're adjusted in size. Again, it's easier to tell what they are based on touch rather than having to constantly glance down at them. And now this is an exciting one for a lot of people, but the function button at the bottom left now doubles as an emoji keyboard. So you no longer have to rely on the shortcuts of command control and space. You now hit one button and your emoji keyboard pops up immediately. Now the trackpad is the same size. However, if you look closely at the two side by side, you see that the new one has much more rounded corners, whereas the previous model was a little bit more squared off. And lastly, the keyboard itself. It's using Apple's new mechanism that was previously introduced on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. It's slightly more risen than it was before, and it actually makes it way easier to type on than the previous edition. And this is probably my favorite improvement on the 13-inch MacBook. I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal, but using it day to day, it's actually made a huge impact on my workflow and just easily being able to type. So those are the key design changes that we've seen with the new 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. However, like I said, there's a second part to this video. Make sure you're subscribed so that you see that. And that's gonna be a side-by-side -side spec comparison between the 2019 and 2020 MacBooks. They're gonna go head to head. We're gonna show all kinds of performance from speed tests to Geekbench to exporting things and After Effects. Just a ton of different tests so that we can see how they stack up. So again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. 
And remember to hit the like button here so that it tells YouTube that videos like this don't suck. Leave a note below to let me know your thoughts on the new M1 MacBook Pro. After everything you've been hearing, are you excited about this model? Let me know that down below. Again, thanks for watching you guys and I'll see you in the next one.